Welcome back, everybody, to Dr. Sellers Educate. We're thrilled to continue to support you on your journey towards successfully passing the CNE exam. For the next several episodes, we're going to be focusing on primary content areas that many nurse educators struggle with closing prior to sitting for the CNE exams. All of these content areas are applicable whether you're taking the CNE, the CNE clinical, or the CNE novice. It's important for us to all start with a good foundation of being a good teacher to ensure that transference of knowledge happens in the classroom, in the clinical, and in the skills lab setting. We are going to be using information from the Dr. Sellers Educate study workbook. We're going to be sharing content that is listed out in the CNE workbook, but it's very similar content that's listed out also in the CNE clinical. If you're not familiar with this workbook, just go ahead and take a look in the details for this episode and you'll see more information about our workbook. Second, you wanna ensure that if you haven't already, that you secure the resources, you will need to be successful on the exam, okay? That's where it starts. We have a 90 to a 95% pass rate, first time success rate for those nurse educators that follow our study plan, okay? So it's not rocket science. And here's the other secret. NLN really does not leave out any content that you need to know about to study for the exam. That's right. All the details are listed out in their exam blueprint. Okay, we just have to do the work. We have to commit to the time that's needed to close our knowledge gaps. So back to the contents page. As you are looking at each of these areas, and we're going to break it down by each part every single week. Okay, so this week, we're focusing on teaching strategies. Okay, that's part one. Taking a look at educational theory, clinical judgment, and learner diversity and inclusivity. You are going to take a look at Billings and Halstead Teaching and Nursing. That is the primary resource that you're going to use. The second resource is Dr. Caputi's CNE Review Book. We are now in the second edition. And thirdly is going to be the Dr. Sellers Educate Study Workbook. If you do not have this resource, then you're not going to be able to follow along in the same way, but you can still take advantage of the content review that we will have every week focusing on each of these parts. And then the fourth resource is going to be the candidate handbook. You want to spend time printing out that candidate handbook, taking a look at that exam test blueprint, the detailed exam test blueprint that's listed in that candidate handbook as we talk about the various areas to get you ready for the CNE exam. When we look at teaching strategies and educational theory, there are two components that you want to consider. First, you are going to look at Appendix A in Dr. Caputi's second edition review book. That's where you're going to see a lot of information about theories associated with teaching and nursing, as well as teaching in general. Okay, so you want to take a look at Appendix A. You also want to consider those theories that are closely aligned with the nursing programs. For example, Cobb's experiential learning theory is one that is very um, closely linked to how we teach and what we teach in a nursing program. Okay, so students are required to complete a certain number of clinical hours as prescribed by the Board of Nursing. There are some boards of nursing that may not require a certain number of hours, but again, that is our primary resource that we look to when we determine what criteria we need to follow when we develop a nursing program and how to remain compliant with the Board of Nursing Standards. Clinical judgment, this is all around Tanner's clinical judgment model. Now, there are a couple of clinical judgment and critical thinking models, but when you look at the exam blueprint, you're going to see a lot of content related to Tanner's clinical judgment model. That information is listed in both of the resources that we've talked about, Billings and Halstead and Dr. Caputi's second edition review book. Learning diversity and inclusivity, what do you need to know? First, you need to know that it's important to integrate a lot of different teaching strategies into the classroom setting, as well as the clinical setting and the skills lab setting. We want to engage students by using high impact practices as we teach. What do we mean by that? Well, high impact practices are those opportunities for us to engage with our students in a way that's going to be meaningful and it's going to transfer knowledge for them to be able to apply those concepts in the clinical setting. 
All right, so this has been part one. I know that was a lot of information. We hope this has been helpful for you. You also wanna check out in our description for this episode, a direct link to all of the YouTube episodes that you can find. And if you're listening to this on our podcast, you can take advantage of that resource as well. Just head over to Dr. Sellers Educate on YouTube, or you can find Dr. Sellers Educate out on Spotify or in Anchor as part of a podcast. Until next time, thank you for joining.